So SpaceX has just revealed the long-awaited version 3 Starship Ship 39, and it's genuinely unlike anything we've seen before. This isn't just another stainless steel prototype rolling out of Starbase. Ship 39 marks the beginning of an entirely new generation of Starship hardware, built after years of hard lessons from flight tests, explosions, heat shield failures, and engine issues. And as we all know by now, SpaceX doesn't build one single Starship design and stick with it. They divide Starship into clear development versions, each one targeting specific weaknesses of the previous generation. The earliest Starships, what many people now call Version 1, were essentially proof-of-concept vehicles. They were shorter, lighter, had thinner steel, used early Raptor engines, and were never meant to reach orbit. Then came Version 2, which pushed Starship into true orbital territory. V-2 ships introduced full heat shields, orbital-class propellant tanks holding over 1,200 tons of liquid methane and liquid oxygen combined more powerful Raptor 2 engines producing around 230 tons of thrust each, and major structural reinforcements to survive orbital re-entry at speeds of roughly 7.5 kilometers per second. But V2 also revealed serious issues including heat shield tile loss, engine bay fires, plumbing leaks, and heavy dry mass that limited payload efficiency. Now we're entering version 3, and Ship 39 is the very first flight-intended vehicle of this new fleet. Ship 39 stands about 50 meters tall, with a 9-meter diameter stainless steel body. Fully stacked on a super-heavy booster, the entire system reaches roughly 120 meters in height, making it the tallest and most powerful launch vehicle ever constructed. But where V3 separates itself from earlier versions is not size. It's how efficiently that size is used. Starship V3 is expected to have a dry mass reduction of several tons compared to V2. Earlier Starship variants were estimated to weigh around 120 to 130 metric tons empty. Internal targets for V3 reportedly push that number closer to the low 110 ton range. Less mass directly translates into higher payload capacity, especially for deep space missions. Payload-wise, SpaceX still targets around 100 to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit in a fully reusable configuration. In an expendable mode, Starship could theoretically exceed 200 metric tons. No other operational rocket even comes close. For comparison, Falcon Heavy maxes out around 63 metric tons to low Earth orbit in expendable mode. Ship 39 is also the first Starship built from the ground up with Raptor 3 integration in mind. Raptor 3 is not just a performance upgrade, it's a manufacturing and reliability overhaul. Earlier Raptor 2 engines produced about 230 metric tons of thrust at sea level. Raptor 3 is expected to maintain similar thrust levels, but with dramatically fewer external pipes, flanges, and joints. Musk has stated that Raptor 3 removes entire layers of complexity, reducing potential leak paths by more than half. Each Starship uses six Raptor engines, three sea-level optimized engines, and three vacuum-optimized engines. Together, they generate roughly 1,380 tons of thrust at liftoff when ignited in space or during landing burns. The Super Heavy booster below adds another 33 Raptors, pushing total thrust at liftoff to around 7,500 metric tons, nearly double the Saturn V's 3,400-ton output. Before Ship 39 can ever fly, it has to survive an aggressive testing campaign, and that campaign was delayed not because the ship wasn't ready, but because SpaceX was validating V3 hardware using dedicated test tanks at the Massey test site. These tanks are not flight vehicles. They're designed to fail and reveal weaknesses before those weaknesses end up on a ship meant to survive orbit and re-entry. Cryogenic testing is one of the most brutal phases. Liquid methane is stored at around minus 161 degrees Celsius and liquid oxygen at about negative 183 degrees Celsius. At those temperatures, stainless steel contracts significantly, weld seams are stressed, and internal pressure loads can exceed flight conditions. SpaceX typically pressurizes tanks to well beyond operational limits, sometimes reaching pressures equivalent to several atmospheres above nominal flight values. Once Ship 39 rolls to Massey, it will undergo the same sequence. Ambient pressure test, 
than cryogenic proof testing. Only after passing those stages will SpaceX move toward engine installation. One of the most important aspects of Ship 39 is its heat shield. Starship re-enters Earth's atmosphere at speeds approaching 7.5 kilometers per second from low Earth orbit. During peak re-entry, temperatures on the windward side of the vehicle can exceed 1,400 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than molten aluminum. To survive this, Starship uses thousands of hexagonal ceramic heat shield tiles. Each tile is designed to tolerate extreme heat while insulating the steel structure beneath. The tiles are mounted using a flexible attachment system that allows for thermal expansion without cracking. Earlier flights showed tile losses and cracking issues, but SpaceX has steadily improved tile composition, attachment pins, and gap fillers. V3 ships are expected to use a more uniform tile layout with fewer custom shapes, which reduces weak points. SpaceX has also improved the silica-based material formulation to better resist repeated thermal cycling. The goal is rapid reuse, not one-off survival. Re-entry is only half the problem. Starship doesn't just survive re-entry, it performs a controlled aerodynamic descent. The vehicle uses four large forward and aft flaps to control orientation and drag, bleeding off speed while maintaining stability. These flaps experience extreme aerodynamic loads, especially during the transonic phase. At certain points, each flap can experience forces equivalent to several hundred tons trying to rip it off the vehicle. Earlier Starship versions had issues with flap actuator shielding and overheating. V3 incorporates improved thermal protection around the hinge mechanisms and revised actuator housings designed to keep temperatures below failure thresholds, even during worst-case re-entry profiles. While Ship 39 is preparing for testing, Booster 19 is coming together in parallel. Super heavy boosters are about 70 meters tall and house massive methane and oxygen tanks capable of feeding 33 engines simultaneously. Booster 19 is expected to be one of the first boosters fully compatible with V3 standard ships. Super Heavy uses grid fins for atmospheric control during descent. These fins are massive steel structures designed to survive hypersonic airflow, shock heating, and dynamic pressure far beyond what Falcon 9 experiences. During descent, Super Heavy transitions from hypersonic to subsonic flight in under two minutes while performing a boost back and landing burn. Now at the same time Ship 39 is preparing for its test campaign, SpaceX is also quietly lining things up for the next major milestone, Starship Flight 12. And when you look at the timeline between Starship launches, you can clearly see how the program has gone through phases of acceleration, slowdown, and now another careful reset. The first integrated Starship flight took place in April 2023. That mission ended in a loss of vehicle just minutes after liftoff, but it provided massive amounts of data. The second flight followed about seven months later in November 2023. That gap was long, but understandable. SpaceX had to rebuild the launch pad, reinforce the orbital launch mount, and redesign parts of the vehicle after discovering how destructive 7,000 tons of thrust really is at liftoff. After that, the cadence began to improve. Flight 3 launched roughly four months later, in March 2024. Flight 4 came just over two months after that. Then Flight 5 and Flight 6 followed with even shorter gaps. At one point, the time between launches had dropped to just over six to eight weeks, which is extremely fast for a rocket of this size. But that trend didn't continue. Flight 10 and Flight 11 introduced more ambitious objectives. Each of those added risk, and risk slows things down. As a result, the gap between Flight 11 and the upcoming Flight 12 is shaping up to be one of the longest since the early days of the program. By the time Flight 12 launches, it will likely have been several months since Flight 11, potentially pushing toward the half-year mark. That's not because SpaceX is struggling, but because they're transitioning between Starship versions. Flight 11 represents the end of the Version 2 era while Flight 12 is expected to either introduce or heavily validate Version 3 hardware, depending on readiness. And while Starship testing goes through these natural ebbs and flows, SpaceX as a company has quietly crossed another staggering milestone. 
Recently, SpaceX became the most valuable private company in the world. SpaceX could reach a valuation as high as $700 to $800 billion within the next few years if Starship succeeds. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.